All right, YouTube, it looks like the Republicans have been handed sort of an early Christmas present uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, there's a link to the Wired article uh, on this specific topic in the description. Uh, it's, it's on Wired, and it's, you know, spreading. Uh, ABC now has picked it up and, and others as well. Um, the title here, here's how newly released Benghazi emails could actually embarrass the White House. Now, until this very moment with this very article and this very memo that's now been released by the CIA. The Republicans in Congress were sort of, sort of stagnating and people were increasingly concerned that it appeared that they were frenetically obsessed with the topic of Benghazi because the majority of the public saw it as a non-scandal. They saw it as a non-issue uh, because to them uh, either the White House was telling the truth and the early information was just mixed up and they didn't, you know, exactly know what was going on, which was an, an overstep. Uh, I, I mean, a, a misstep on their part, but, you know, not necessarily uh, something you can blame them for. Or they considered it an unimportant issue and they said, well, you know, these people are they're certainly not lying to the public. Uh, the Republicans are just, you know, going nuts here. Uh, this, it turns out, however, that that's uh, not actually the case. It turns out that the sort of things that were being theorized by the right wing this entire time since Benghazi happened <clears throat> were actually right. Uh, that the worst fears were correct fears and that actually uh, Hillary and Obama and all of these others we're lying to the American people, uh, which should, you know, I would think even if you're a Democrat, this would piss you off. You've just got lied to by someone you thought was honest because they had a D after their name. I'm not sure how that mentality works. Uh, you look at this one uh, clip out, and then you can look at the whole memo, uh, but it suffices for the purpose of this video to just look at the part that's sort of highlighted here. Uh, new documents obtained by the conservative group Judicial Watch Judicial Watch, by the way, used to be a liberal group when Bush was the president. By a Freedom of Information Act request, include a different set of talking points created by Obama advisor Ben Rhodes and sent to administration officials, including spokesman Jay Carney. Jay Carney looks like he has perpetual diarrhea. Every, every time he talks, he's like, he's like wincing and making these weird faces. Uh, I think part of it is he probably has irritable bowel syndrome from having one of the toughest jobs in the world. Uh, for the last year and a half or so, he's had to repeatedly explain to the media and to everybody else all the missteps by the administration. It's sort of like, uh, you know, being Dick Cheney's hunting partner. It's a, a dangerous and unforgiving job. Uh, if you look at this, goals to convey that the United States is doing everything that we can to protect our people and facilities abroad. Well, that's fine. Then you go to the highlighted part, to underscore that these protests are rooted in an internet video and not a broader failure, failure of policy. The problem is, <clears throat> this is implicating, again, the YouTube video, Passion of Muhammad, or Innocence of Muslims, or whatever the hell it was, <laughs> Passion of Muhammad, whatever the hell it was called. Uh, the idea that was put out by the White House and by the left in general after the Benghazi attacks was that this video had been made, it caused these spontaneous uprisings across the Middle East as people got truly offended, and that they attacked this embassy. However, by the time this memo was put out encouraging this to be said to people, they already knew, by CIA testimony we know this, that that was not the case, that the video had absolutely nothing to do with this embassy attack. Now, Jay Carney has come out and said, but this is referring to other protests, and what he's saying now, and this is as dishonest as it can possibly come, and only someone who's truly mentally challenged would believe him when he says this, his new line is, well, we're not saying that the video directly caused the Benghazi attack, it caused the other protests, which in turn caused the Benghazi attack. That doesn't make sense. First and foremost, it's not true. Uh, clearly, it wouldn't make sense for that to be the way things worked out. This was probably pre-planned. It probably had nothing to do with the video anyway. But even if it did have something tenuously to do with the video, uh, they knew at this time that the attack wasn't directly caused by it. But they continued to use that line for some time directly afterwards, using this and other memos. What Jay Carney is saying is this is simply related to all of these protests, but the thing is, this is a talking points for the media. 
The media is not going to ask about the other protests. They're interested in the attack on this specific embassy. Why would it make sense then to bring this up? And especially if you remember the way it was brought up, the way it was being spoken about at the time was the video is directly responsible for this specific attack at this specific embassy in Benghazi resulting in these specific casualties. But this, according to Carney, in retrospect, is referring to other protests sparking it. So why wouldn't it have made sense for Carney to explain that at the time, over a year ago? Why wouldn't it have made sense for Obama and Hillary and Carney to have come out and said, yes, our original, uh, what we said was, was true, but we said it wrong. What we meant was that the video caused other uprisings, and that in turn these caused a spontaneous or pre-planned event at Benghazi. That would have been true, assuming that it's the case, but that's not what they said, and that's not what they've said for the last over a year now on this topic. Now, I had started to lose interest in Benghazi as well, because for a very long time there, what it appeared to be was an increasingly zealous right wing trying to score a few extra points before the midterms. But now it turns out that even if they were politicizing the issue, they were at least correct about the issue. Because it turns out that everything said by Obama and Hillary and Carney and all of these others directly after Benghazi were lies. That should piss people, this shouldn't, by the way, just piss off Republicans. It should piss off everybody. Because the media isn't just composed of right-wing individuals. And when Carney came out and addressed them, people from uh, ABC, one of the uh, people from ABC absolutely raked him over the coals, and I just saw a video of it. <clears throat> and that's ABC. Nobody claims ABC is part of the, the general right-wing news networks. Uh, when you start to see, you know, MSNBC jump on board and start to attack Carney, then you know that it's truly happening. Uh, but clearly, the American public was lied to about this attack. I've also seen, like, infographics by, you know, Democrats saying, well, all these embassies were attacked when Bush was president. Yes, they were attacked. The difference being the response. We were actually prepared to, when those embassies were attacked, troops fired back. When those embassies were attacked, it was clear that they were attacked because these were terroristic individuals or, or, you know, whatever you refer to them as, Islamic individuals attacking embassies because they didn't like the fact that we were in Iraq and Afghanistan. But with this, it was the attempt was made to blame it on a YouTube video, which never had anything to do in any way, shape, or form with this specific attack. Again, if you're talking to the media immediately after this type of story, you're not going to get asked about protests in Tunis or Khartoum. You're going to get asked about this specific protest and or terrorist event. It does not make sense, unless you intend to fully explain it, to blame it on a YouTube video that caused other attacks, that caused this attack, that caused... And the, the story goes... Uh, my Windows installer is trying to update... Uh, that caused all these attacks. It doesn't make any sense, because he never said that. Obama never pointed that out. Hillary never alluded to it. And Hillary famously said, what difference does it make? It does make a difference to the average person in the country. That, even if her saying that wasn't meant to be, you know, insulting to the people who died, or to the American public's intelligence, or to the intelligence of the media, it at least came off that way, and it uh, people... Uh, were taken slightly aback because they're not used to Hillary Clinton flipping out in a rage like that. But what seems to have been the case is she knew that she was being raked over the coals about something that could be exposed to the wider media. If something exactly like what happened last night with this memo release happened, I would say that if this hits the media full force, if it gets taken up by CNN, which is not known for running front page news, critical of Obama, if MSNBC alludes to it, if it's basically if it spreads throughout the actual mainstream media that most sheep-like dumb Americans watch, then probably what you'll see is no chance of Hillary running, because she'll be implicated, she'll be completely destroyed. Uh, you'll see Obama's approval sink like a rock, because it will be clear that for over a year, especially when we were right close to the elections, nonetheless, lied to everyone. This is, this is like something the Bush would, you, when Obama first got in office, you never would have guessed that he would make all of these mistakes either. 
because he seemed a lot more intelligent than the dude who just left. This is something you would expect from someone like Bush. This isn't something you would expect from Obama. You, you may expect him to lie, but you don't expect him to get caught completely with his pants down. This is like a Nixon gaffe. Uh, this is like something you'd see in the Bush era. It, it's really quite strange, and it's rather, rather entertaining as well. Uh, I'll go through the rest of this article in case there's any uh, anything else. Uh, there it talks about the uh, statements from the CIA. By the way, the CIA now has said it had nothing to do with the video. Uh, Carney on video, this is not the case of protests directed the United States writ larger on U.S. policy. This is in response to a video that is offensive. Notice, he's taking this directly from that line on the memo. Wallace, you don't really believe that. Rice, Chris, absolutely, I, well, this is, uh, this is Rice talking now. Chris, absolutely, I believe that. In fact, it is the case. We had the evolution of the Arab Spring over the last many months, but what sparked the recent violence was the airing on the internet of a very hateful, very offensive video that offended many people around the world. Uh, not that many people even saw that video, let alone in Islamic countries with strict censorship laws. Uh, I, I don't think any of these people ever saw that video. I don't think they're even capable of watching a video that's labeled Innocence of Muslims and includes that sort of footage because these countries are heavily censored. So uh, there's lots of good stuff here, uh, and I can't wait to see how this evolves. What you could see is that the media totally stonewalls it and refuses to report on it, and all you see are, are basically Fox News fans that know that this has actually happened. However, it appears to have hit the... Uh, the Washington Post, and it appears to have hit ABC News already. So it could evolve into a massive story. This could be a little bit like the early days of the NSA leaks. Uh, good times. Excitement. Uh, if for no other purpose than to see Obama get completely confused and not really know what's going on, because it seems like he's feeling that way more and more often uh, lately. It's pretty funny to watch. Uh, I had the same palpable joy when Bush was president, and he would say something totally off the wall, uh, like fish and humans coexisting or something like that. We're starting to get more of that from an increasingly paranoid, confused Obama. Uh, there's also a story now going around regarding the NSA and the back doors they've been inserting in everyone's software, that maybe this has caused uh, China to gain a major industrial advantage over us because they've been using that same software in turn to spy on business assets in the United States, which if true is an even more grave misstep and is going to cause a catastrophic tidal wave of news if it ever hits the mainstream media. Uh, so I'm looking at this with interest. I find this hilarious. Uh, but